The wait is over. How's everybody doing? I'm Jay Elson, and this is Kyle Quarter. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to get you up to speed with everything you need to know about South Dakota football heading into the 2016 season. First, though, here's a quick recap of what was an extremely busy offseason. It began, of course, with a change in leadership. On December 15, 2015, Bob Nielsen was hired away from Western Illinois to replace the retired Joe Glenn. Nielsen was the reigning Missouri Valley Football Conference Coach of the Year after leading Western Illinois to a seven-win season, which included a trip to the FCS playoffs. After quickly completing his coaching staff, Nielsen hit the recruiting trail, an effort that ultimately landed 31 student-athletes on National Signing Day. After a successful spring season, which concluded with a 68-65 win for the defense in the annual Red-White game, the Coyotes turned their attention to the fall. South Dakota kicked off training camp on August 3rd with the first of its 29 preseason practices. Now, one of the top priorities once again has been the installation of Nielsen's trademark up-tempo offense. The coach has been fairly pleased with the pace and execution he's seen over the past few weeks and says at this point, the focus is fine-tuning. Yeah, we've made a lot of progress um, right now kind of uh, in the process of, of paring down what we think we can do really well. Uh, I think that's important for the first couple of games is try not to do too much. Uh, try to do those things that you can do well and then build on that as you go through the year. Well, we know how the Coyotes want to operate on offense, but we don't know who's going to be at the controls. We'll take a closer look at this year's quarterback candidates when we come back. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, and your Core Trust Bank. And welcome back. Well, fall camp is about competition with guys fighting for jobs all over the field. At USD, the battle receiving the most attention this year has been at quarterback, where not one, not two, but three guys have been stating their cases to be the Coyotes' starting signal caller. There's a saying in football that states, if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Coaches in South Dakota disagree. We found out uh, through the years that if you've got two guys that you have confidence in and your team has confidence in, uh, when you're playing in this kind of conference, uh, uh, that is a huge luxury to be able to have. And, and honestly, we're going to be in a situation where we're going to have three. The candidates in alphabetical order are senior Ryan Sager, redshirt freshman Austin Simmons, and junior Chris Strebler. Each of them brings a little something different to the table, which makes all three worth a good long look. The competition's been good. Uh, we've got three really good players there, uh, guys that I think can all effectively lead our offense and lead our football team. Sager is the incumbent and the most proven. The Heartland, Wisconsin native started all 11 games for the Yotes last season, completing 55% of his passes for just under 2,000 yards and 12 touchdowns against just seven interceptions. Ryan has won games in this conference before, which means he can do it for sure. Um, he's a savvy dude. He, he's, he's played the most of the three. You know, I think he started 15 games or so, something like that, so, and he's won big games. So you know, that senior, he's a captain, that part is... Um, what he brings to the table, he's a lot more mobile than people would give him credit for. Um, makes really good decisions. Leadership is a big thing for me. Um, so I, I, I'm trying to establish myself as a leader and be vocal and, and keep the guys up there while, while we're working hard. Simmons is the smallest guy of the group physically, but he's got massive potential. He has great feet and a big time arm, making him a prototypical dual threat. Top five athlete on our team throws the ball like unlike anyone I've seen you know he's just really young and raw and you know with all the good plays you know he he's got he's a freshman so putting that together last year coming in I wouldn't have been ready to step on the field at all uh, just taking it in I got to travel to every game so I got to get some experience through that not even playing but uh, this year I feel like I'm ready to contribute I've put a lot of time into it so uh, if coach calls on me I'll be ready to go Strevler transferred into the program from the University of Minnesota. He played a little quarterback and a little wide receiver for the Gophers, but came to USD with hopes of sticking under center. He's a different type of athlete as well. Um, came in and worked really hard this summer, did as much as he could to get ready, and you know, he's a spring behind those other guys, but you know, he's, he's an athletic guy, throws the ball well. It's one of my biggest things is just going out there and doing everything I can to help the team win. Running and throwing the ball, I feel like I can do those decently well, and 
Um, just from a leadership standpoint, you know, continuing to get comfortable with everyone here and, you know, every day taking a step forward in that sense. The wild card in all of this could have been chemistry. At a position that demands confidence, it would have been easy for egos to creep into the equation. But to the quarterback's credit, this particular competition has remained as friendly as it has fierce. All of us want to play, that's obvious, but we all, more than anything, want the Coyotes to win games. And I think that that's, that's one thing that we, all three of us, have done a good job of, of doing and, and realizing that no matter how this thing plays out, the ultimate goal is to win games and have a great season. All three players kept themselves in the mix for the duration of fall camp, which left the Coyotes without a clear-cut winner. As a result, South Dakota will not settle on a single signal caller heading into this week's season opener at New Mexico. We will eventually name uh, a starter in terms of who's going to start the game. At the same time, uh, you know, I can tell you and, and fans that uh, you're going to see multiple people uh, playing at that position through the course of the the game, there's some things that each of them do very well uh, and probably a little bit better than the others, and we're going to try to, to uh, utilize their talents to their fullest. While the quarterbacks have been drawing the most attention, the rest of the Coyote offense has also been working to get up to speed in Bob Nielsen's new and potentially high-powered system. Here's a look at how the rest of that group breaks down. Regardless of which guy is under center this season, they'll have some pretty talented targets at their disposal. Junior Brant Van Rukel, who led the team in both receiving yards and touchdowns last season, headlines a much more athletic, albeit inexperienced, group of pass catchers. Anybody at any time in this offense is going to have the opportunity to make plays, so it's just important to me, uh, you know, people looking up to me as a leader in the position group, you know, just to make plays when I get the opportunity. The return of Riley Donovan should also provide a boost. Donovan missed all but two games in 2015 and had surgery on both hips in the offseason. It's been a long road back, but he says he feels better now than he ever has. It was definitely worth it. I mean, I was in constant pain with all his hips and everything like that. So now, now I have no problems with them. I mean, I'm more flexible than I was before, which is pretty amazing. The Coyotes will also be hoping for big things from Juco transfer Alonje Brooks, sophomore Shamar Jackson and Takari Carpenter, and potentially a couple of true freshmen. In Bob Nielsen's time at Western Illinois, the tight ends were counted on much more for blocking than they were for catching. That will likely change at South Dakota. It makes blocking a lot, you know, a lot more rewarding when you know you got an opportunity to get a football as a tight end. And you know we have some guys here uh, I think can be threats uh, in the vertical passing game. And and when they catch a ball underneath, their their size gives them the ability to break a couple tackles and uh, fall forward and get some first downs. Aaron Ramsey has certainly shown that ability. The junior has averaged almost 15 yards on 29 career catches, but intends to increase that production in the Coyotes' new wide-open attack. Complementing Ramsey will be converted fullback Drew Potter and junior Josh Hale. Those two have combined for 23 catches and four touchdowns over the past two seasons. With Trevor Bama and Michael Frederick both returning, the Coyotes have a solid one-two punch at running back. Bama averaged six yards per carry with six touchdowns as a junior, but saw his season cut short due to an arm injury for the second straight year. Feel good, feel healthy. Um, you know, I feel completely fine, ready to go for the season. Um, strongest, fastest I've ever been, so I'm excited about it. I didn't know how good he was, and uh, quickly in the spring I, I realized it. You know, when we held him back, and then in the fall, I mean he. He's a phenomenal player. He's going to definitely have a great year. Frederick rushed for over 600 yards as a true freshman, including a season best 143 against South Dakota State. To this point, there have been no signs of a sophomore slump. Junior Corey Kilgore, as well as Juco transfer Antoine Connor and sophomore Paul Anderson could also see some carries. Paving the way for that running game will be an offensive line that's something of a work in progress. The anchor will be Niall Banks, who switched to center after two seasons at left guard. It's a whole new game when you get a guy in front of you and you have to go and block him while you snap. So I had some rough snaps in spring ball, and then uh, over the summer we really hit it a lot. Every day pretty much we were out there snapping. I think now it's become second nature, and once that's down, it's basically just like guard and you do it about the same. I feel pretty good now. Left tackle Nick Jensen, along with junior guards Ed Kennedy and Stetson Dagle, also bring starting experience. But beyond that, the group is largely unproven. It's not something you pick up overnight, especially for those young guys. 
And the thing about us, it's it's all technique that I brought in. Is everything's new for them. You know, even the guys that are uh, fifth year guys coming back. So, you know, everything's new. So they're doing a nice job, working hard. So I'm happy with them. The South Dakota defense has some sizable holes to fill following the departures of several of last year's key contributors. Find out how things are looking on that side of the football next. After a rough go in 2014, the Coyote defense took a huge step forward last season, finishing in the top half of the Valley in just about every statistical category. A lot of the top contributors from that unit have since moved on, but as Kelly Stewart explains, South Dakota remains confident in its ability to stop the opposition. 2015 saw a variety of improvements on the defensive side of the ball for USD. With a change to a 4-3 scheme, the extra linemen meant better run support, more QB pressure, and a more manageable learning curve. Now in 2016, the Yotes are sticking with that 4-3 base, but still the learning curve is there with new faces at the coaching ranks. However, hard work and a great focus have allowed the USD defense to be quick learners during the offseason. But bringing in a new system, I mean, everybody started from square one. Uh, back in December and has been working really hard. So that offers us a lot of opportunities to coach off of that off film and everybody's been getting better. Although everyone has been making huge strides, nothing can replace in-game experience. And that's something that the Yotes are lacking in a few position groups. Looking at the defensive line, there are 16 shop wreckers on the roster, but 10 of them have never played a live down for USD. They'll be looking to leadership from Sean Breedel, Colin Mertlick, John Mogg, and Jake Lair to carry them. There's always going to be a learning curve. I don't care what age you are when a new coach comes in and brings in new assistants. They've probably played some of the same techniques that we, that, that we use. They may call them apples, we call them oranges. The mental side is one part. When you give a kid the ability to play with great effort and push him that way, he'll make up for his mistakes that he makes on the field. Backing up the D-line is the Yote linebacking core, which comes into the fall with a fair amount of experience. But a fall camp injury to senior leader and playmaker John Wessel means USD will be looking to other backers in the crew, like Jim LaTrenta, Devin O'Farrell, Alex Coker, and Jet Moreland to make plays while the team's third leading tackler from a year ago is sidelined. We got the next man in mentality. Somebody's got to step up, someone's got to replace him. Obviously it's tough to replace a guy with that much experience. Uh, but the next guy's got to be ready. The thing that you know is we're going to get better every day. And, you know, it's a work in progress, and guys are getting better every day. And so by the end of it, we'll, we'll be where we need to be. And then in New Mexico, we'll be ready. Finally, the Coyotes secondary provides an interesting flux of fresh faces and experienced playmakers. At cornerback, junior Adam Harris is the most experienced with just five starts under his belt. But great offseason performances by players like junior college transfer Doug Lewis and converted wide receiver Danny Rambo are promising. I mean, that summer was a big thing for us, you know, with all the techniques and the new coach. I think those guys are finally starting to come along. It's about confidence right now. Rounding out the South Dakota defense is a core of safeties that includes two of the most experienced guys on the Yote roster in Tyson Graham and Jacob Warner. Graham was USD's second leading tackler a year ago and is receiving looks from a variety of NFL scouts. With he and Warner in their final go-around in a Coyote jersey, Graham wants to make the most of this season and set the tone for the rest of the defense. It's great to have me and Jacob, you know, with great experience, especially playing in the Missouri Valley, as uh, it's much needed. And, um... Our awareness and success hopefully translates to the younger guys and they'll be able to, you know, um, play their role and be able to create as much success as we do. And, you know, we'll have a successful defense once everybody's on the same page and um, gets going. The Coyote defense has made huge strides throughout the summer and fall camp. Coach Tyler Yelk has noted that one thing that's been promising is every person on the defense brings something different to the table. So they balance each other out well with strengths and weaknesses, Jay. All right, thanks, Kelly. Now, while the offense and defense will each feature several new faces, special teams is going to have a very familiar look. Miles Bergner will once again be handling all kicking duties for the Oats in 2016. The Longmont, Colorado native was fourth best in the Valley in punting average a year ago and second in field goals made per game. I think uh, I've grown as a player. Um, I've definitely had some help from places. Uh, Brandon Gatsy, <laughs> uh, definitely, but... Um, I think yeah, I think I'm ready to ready to nail it nail it all together and uh, um, call it a finished product this season. So 
Brandon Godsey, whom Bergner just mentioned, is back as the team's long snapper. Meanwhile, in the return game, there are several players in the mix, including sophomores Paul Anderson and Shamar Jackson, as well as true freshmen Randy Baker and Tristan Ducker. Well, which Coyotes could be headed for a breakout season in 2016? We'll talk about that and more with Argus Leader Media's Mick Gary after this. All right, well, we've broken down the roster from top to bottom and given you at least an idea of how the coaches and players feel about where things are heading into Thursday's season opener. Now it's time to throw in a little opinion, and one man that's paid to give his is Mick Gary, who covers the Coyotes for Argus Leader Media. Mick, let's start with the offense. Uh, when we talked to you in the spring, you said this new system was going to be the one thing that stood out most about this brand new era of South Dakota football. They certainly put a lot of work into it to this point, that's for sure. Uh, but based on what you've seen so far, how effective is it going to be? I think in time it's going to give receivers more room. I think in time it's going to help Trevor Bauma at running back. Initially, though, I think you're going to see some hiccups in there because this offense is all predicated on being greased, on make, forcing the defense to make decisions faster than they want to make them in preparation for a play. And I think that it's just going to take a little bit of time collectively for that offensive unit to do things at, the, at a pace that's going to really make it an advantage for them. Quarterback play certainly going to help dictate how successful I think this thing is going to be, too. The, that offense goes through the quarterback like no other offense. And so we don't know, you know who it's going to be. It depends on the day. But that guy is going to have to be very comfortable with what's going on. And, and that person is going to have to be really on top of the situation and comfortable with what they're doing. All right, well, at this time of year, it's always fun to try and figure out which lesser publicized players are going to make the biggest impact on the team this season. You and I talk about this type of thing quite a bit, actually. Uh, last year, I think it was Andrew Van Ginkle and Mike Frederick. I don't think there's too much debate there. Uh, who's it going to be this year, though? Give me one guy, each side of the ball, that you think is poised for a breakout season. Well, the one guy we haven't seen him play at all, Alonje Brooks, uh, but certainly looks like a guy... You watch him in practice, you look at what he's done up to this point, you look at the teams that were also recruiting him. He looks like a guy where you could expect that he's going to have the potential to be a game changer sure. once he gets comfortable with what's going on out there. He's a little bit bigger kid, still has kind of that speed, a small man speed, and uh, looks like he can go out and get the ball too. Uh, so I would guess over the course of he stays healthy, you're going to see him as being more and more a part of the offense. Defensively, Adam Harris. Came into the program with real solid credentials uh, and, and played, I think, started five games last year. And it wasn't because of injury. He was he, he had earned the right to get into those games to that degree. Uh, and you watch him in practice, you look at what the kid looks like. He's a big, strong kid playing cornerback. I think potentially he could be that guy that we haven't really watched too closely yet who could be an all-conference level player. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, that's what the coaches say. They really like what this kid brings. And, and in a group where they're really going to need – him to step up and be the guy that he's expected to be because there isn't a whole lot of depth there, at least proven depth to this point at that corner spot. All right, well, finally, what's it going to take for Bob Nielsen's first season at USD to be considered a success? It is, is it as simple as wins and losses? It's not, and I think that any time a first-year coach uh, is in there, in college football especially, it is tough to make an immediate impact. Um, I think that how you measure him this year is – are the guys who remain healthy the whole year, are they better players at the end of the year uh, than they were at the beginning of the year? And certainly the backups who are getting opportunities to play, are they looking better than they did at the beginning of the year? And, and that's, as you, yeah, I mean, wins and losses is always going to be there and, and to a certain extent. But in so, when you go into a season when so many games are kind of 50-50 games where it depends on this or that happening most of the time, you just got to watch and see your your players get better as the season goes along. All right, good stuff. Again, Mick Gary from Argus Leader Media. Thank you, sir. All right, well, stay tuned. We're going to wrap things up with a quick preview of Thursday's season opener and let you know which Coyote games will be broadcasting in 2016. Right after this. Coyote Corner on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, and your Core Trust Bank.
Well, in a little more than 24 hours, the Bob Nielsen era will officially kick off in Albuquerque as the Coyotes take on the University of New Mexico in their season opener. The Lobos, led by former Notre Dame head coach Bob Davey, returned 17 starters, including 10 on defense from last year's 7-6 and six team, which finished with a loss to Arizona in the New Mexico Bowl. Offensively, the Lobos feature an option attack, which ranked third in the Mountain West in rushing last season at over 226 yards per game. So the challenge for us is the preparation for option football teams on defense is different than uh, most of the preparations that we have for teams in our league. It, it, cause, it causes you to play true assignment football on defense. The advantage that a first game gives you is you got a lot of time to prepare. Now, South Dakota would love nothing more than to secure their second win over an FBS program, but Nielsen says a victory isn't the only way for his team to get off on the right foot. You want to go down there and, and play with, with, uh, with a tremendous amount of passion and, and play hard, and, and you want to execute really well. You want to come out of there with something that you can build on for the next week. The thing with some of those younger players, uh, you know, chance for them to, to be in the, the spotlight and, and gain some experience against high-quality opponent, uh, hopefully uh, set you up for some of the high-quality opponents that we're going to play in our league. The first ever meeting between South Dakota and New Mexico set for 8 p.m. Thursday. I will be traveling with the team once again this season, so be sure to follow along for updates at MidcoSN.com and on Twitter at Elson MidcoSN. The Coyotes are set to kick off the home portion of their schedule the following week as they host Weber State on Saturday, September 10th. That'll be the first of six games to be broadcasted live here on Midco Sports Network this season. Four of those will be at the Dakota Dome. We'll also have the road contests at North Dakota and South Dakota State. All right, that is our time for Kelly Stewart. I'm Jay Elson. We'll see you back here next Wednesday night for another episode of Kyle Corner.